now that we've got our Firebase functions created, we're in a position to set up our Cloud Firestore triggers to listen on our followers collection for both on create and on delete. When a new follower is created for a given user's user followers collection, as well as when an ID or follower is deleted from it. So first, within index.js in our functions folder, it's worth noting that we can create whatever function that we like simply by saying exports dot and then giving this function a name. So naturally, it would make sense to call this first one on create follower and to listen for when a follower is created, we need to say functions dot firestore and use the document method to select the document that we want. So we need to provide basically the entire path here. Followers, then the user ID, user followers, and then the other user ID, what we'll call the follower ID. So within document, we can list out this path as a string. We'll say forward slash followers, and then we'll use this wildcard syntax because we don't know what the value of the user ID is going to be here. We know at the beginning of the path we're going to have a followers collection, but we don't know exactly what this user ID is going to be. So we're just going to name it within curly braces user ID slash user followers slash and then the follower ID that was added. Again, we don't know what that ending follower ID will be, so we'll use wildcard follower ID. And then after selecting our document path, we need to add the name of our trigger, which will be on create. So if we look at the Firebase documentation for Cloud Firestore triggers, we see we get two values here for the function that's passed to on create. We get snap, meaning a snapshot of the data that was added, as well as context, which includes information like our path. We can get, for example, the user ID value and the follower ID value from context. So now let's add our method on create, and for it we'll get snapshot and context. We'll write this as an arrow function. And so from context, we can get the user ID, which we'll put in a variable that we'll initialize with const called user ID. That's going to come from context.params.userID. And then for follower ID, you can get that from, if we put it in a variable called follower ID, context.params.followerID. Okay, so let's say a new follower has been created. One user follows another. What happens? Well, within onCreate, after that document's made, we get the user follower and following ID. And we want to get all of the posts, all the previous posts of the user that's being followed. So that user is going to be identified by their user ID. So the first step is to get followed users posts. So let's create a variable called followed user ref. We want to create a reference to this user and select their post collection. Again, we can get their post from the post collection based on their ID. So to get the Firestore instance, basically the equivalent of saying Firestore.instance here for a Firestore function, a Firebase function is admin.firestore, and we execute Firestore. We want to select the collection post, so we'll use this collection method. And then for an individual document, the doc method, doc, and pass in the user ID. And then to reference their post collection, we can say collection and the string user posts. So let's actually call this the followed user posts ref. And now we want to get the following 
user users timeline and we'll put this ref in a variable called timeline posts ref. So again, we'll say admin.firestore. The collection will be timeline, as we spoke about in the last video. The document will be linked to the follower ID and their collection of timeline posts. So now we want to take each post that's resolved from a get request that we make to this ref and add that post to the timeline. So I'll just rename the first step to create followed users posts ref and the second to create following users timeline ref. And now for three, we're going to get the followed users posts. And we'll do that simply by saying await follower posts ref dot get or followed user posts ref dot get and we can use async await syntax here we just need to prepend the function parameters with the keyword async so we can immediately resolve this request and put it in a variable which we'll call query snapshot so then fourth and the last step add each user post to following users timeline. So we're just going to take the query snapshot and iterate over it with for each. And from our query snapshot, it's going to work exactly like we know snapshots to work in Flutter. From the query snapshot, we can get each document. So we're going to use an arrow function here written just like this. And first we'll check to see if the document exists. So we're going to have that same Boolean on the document. And how we're going to add this post to our timeline posts ref is first going to consist of creating a unique ID with doc instead of document. And we're going to get that from doc.id. We'll put that in a variable called post ID. So this will be our custom ID and then on it, we will set our data, not using the method set data, but just set. And the data from the document is going to come from doc.data, and we'll need to execute this as a method. And we'll put that in a variable called post data. So for this first function, I just wanted to be very clear about what we were doing maybe using Node or JavaScript isn't familiar to you, its syntax isn't familiar. But at this point, we now have our onCreateFollower trigger. And up at the top, I want to console log, I want to say when this is created, a new user is created, just the text, follower created. And to pass as the second argument, snapshot.data. So now to use this, we first need to save index.js, then we want to deploy it. We're going to deploy all of our functions to a remote server. Firebase is going to take care of this. And the approach to deploying all of our functions is to run the command in our terminal, Firebase deploy dash dash only, meaning the only resource we want to deploy is as follows. And that will be functions. And very quickly, before we actually run this command, make sure to bring in the package Firebase Admin. Remember where we're referencing admin.firestore? We need to require or reference our Firebase Admin package and set that equal to this admin variable. And then when we have admin, we need to run initialize app. So apologies for not mentioning that earlier, but definitely make sure that you add this variable before we deploy. So now we can correctly reference different collections with the Firestore SDK. We'll make sure to save index.js and now we can run Firebase deploy only functions. So if everything was created successfully and you don't have any errors in your code, we should see deploy complete and that our function on create follower was created. Now, how do we actually view our function? Well, we can head to our Firebase console and then go to the 
functions resource here on the left. And in our dashboard, we should have all of our functions list out. We see the function name on create follower. We see its trigger, it's triggered on document create. We see its related path that we associated with it. And to see its logs, we can click on this button on the far right hand side and view logs. And to view logs in real time, we can just hit the live button. Now to test out our function, let's create a follower. We'll find a user to follow. And first we'll navigate back to our Firestore database. So we don't have our timeline collection currently or followers or following. Now let's follow a user and we'll refresh the database. In a split second afterwards, we have followers and a new follower was added. So hopefully our function will run. If we go back to functions and look at our function log with view logs, we see at the bottom follower created and we don't have any data associated with the log and that's because we're just creating an ID so that would be available on snapshot.id so it looks like this ran successfully we see status OK then heading back to our database should have a timeline collection and we do that's linked to the currently authenticated user by their ID we see timeline posts and we see a post ID reference and connected to the user that we followed with the username Abe and they only have one post but we have that now copied and moved over to our own timeline in addition to on the post collection that post being there as well.